Good day, good day, good day. All right, as you guys can see, I'm I'm using the look see cam again. Today will be a, another review. Only this time will be over uh, Chinese Mandarin. So before I get into it, um, a lot of people have been asking me about this camera. They think I'm recording with two cameras. This is look see cam is pretty much a Bluetooth. I have it on my ear. Okay, so. Um, it's it's on my ear, but the program is on my phone. So when I turn it on, I have to go through go to, go directly to the program here. So that's why you can see it on my phone. All right. So get that out the way. All right. So now Chinese Mandarin. So as you can see here, I've laid out all the books here that I have, or all the books that I'm going to go through. Recommend for you. Okay, so I made a video similar to this for Japanese. If you if you haven't seen that video, I'll go ahead and I'll post this as a response. I'll post that as a response to this video. You can go check it out if you're a student of Japanese or um, are interested in learning Japanese. Now, before I do this review, I want to I want to give some um, important recommendations here, some important advice. Before you start learning any language, okay, this goes for any language, the first thing you want to do is, you know, find a community, find the people, all right, you can do this online, you can go to a forum, find a place where you can find natives of that particular language, okay, which in this case is Chinese, go to a forum, see, uh, look, for some, look for some natives, and um, ask around about different chat rooms or you know just places where you can meet all types of Chinese and I'm not saying just Chinese people just from mainland China you want to meet Chinese from um not just mainland China but from Taiwan you know different places because you know that the language is a little different like you may a lot of the resources that you're going to get they're basically um mainland Chinese accent so you're going to get used to that but then one day you're going to meet someone from Taiwan and you're going to notice that the, the pronunciation accent is pretty different. It's a lot different and you may get confused. So before you even start on Chinese, just make sure you find some friends from different places. Taiwanese people, people from Taiwan, and the people from mainland China. Very, very important advice here, okay? So the reason why you want to find, not just that, you want to find some natives because you want to practice the language as much as you as much as you can <clears throat> it's always <clears throat> excuse me it's always good to have a have a few natives to practice with a chat room where you can go use a lot of the stuff that you learn okay this this is why it's very important now if you're more of a if you're an outgoing extroverted you know you like getting out there then you may be able to find some natives in your city Go to your local library, um, your university. Um, I'm sure you, you at your university there are a lot of exchange students. I'm sure there are a lot of Chinese students who are willing to um, do a language exchange from English, from Chinese to English. So that's a, that's another option for you. Um, yeah, so I think that's it before I get into it. So I'm holding my phone because I'm trying to. I'm going to make sure you guys can see what I see. So, I'm going to go ahead and put it down. All right. So, um, we're going to start over here with these. So, as you can see, oh, for students who are using my, like, my students, students who are using this, um, using the FLR, or students who are interested in learning Chinese, this video like if you already have this FLR course, I'm going to show you what you can use at the same time. Okay? So, FLR course, dictionary, and Osimil. Now, let me explain this. For your students, because it all depends on your learning style. Students who are into um, learning without grammar, without just a grammatical approach, you're not so analytical, you're not the analytical type of person then I will highly recommend you to use my course, ICMIL, and use LINK because those courses aren't 
he uh, heavily grammar based. All right, they're 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 all natural, and what I mean by natural is you start with like um, with my course, like level one. You basically have questions and answers, and you have the um, keywords, and I basically show you how to uh, use those questions and answers, how you need to put those together. You're basically learning how to put stuff together, learning those important questions and answers that you will hear when you meet a native speaker. I know it sounds like grammar, but it's really not. It's really not a grammatical approach. So that's what my course is about, Level 1. You learn questions and answers. You learn all that stuff. Um, and then once you get to level two, you get into text, reading text, and using, continuing to use the FLR method um, with those texts, okay? And the, those texts are similar to, like, pretty much similar to um, the Aussie Mill or the um, Steve Kaufman's um, text that he has on, over on his site. But the only thing is... I have a technique that I use for those particular sentences. So that's why it's highly recommended to use an Oxymill or Steve Kaufman site at the same time. All right? So if you already have this course, which many of you have, you can go ahead and get Oxymill. Okay? Get Oxymill or, you know, go over to Steve Kaufman's site, register there, and start working through the text. All right? Because it's always good to have more more other text to read. So work through this and work through Aussie Mill. All right. So um, let's see what else. This dictionary I would recommend for beginners. Lang and Scheiss dictionary. This dictionary is pretty old, but I think it's a really good dictionary for beginners. You can start with this. All right. So that's for beginners. We all know that's very important. That's the most important um, time to make a decision on what you need to use. So that's what I would highly recommend. If you are a non-analytical person and don't really like too much grammar, I will take this approach. All right. Now, if you are analytical and prefer to um, take a grammatical approach, then I will recommend you to use courses like Teach Yourself. I'm paying attention to my phone. Make sure this thing doesn't freeze up. Okay, I will recommend you to use Teach Yourself. Use a Hippocrane. Living Language. Okay, any of those courses. I would recommend. If you like, if, if you're just analytical, that's just in your nature. I will start with these. Why? Because not only do they have the dialogues, but they also have or the grammar section. They explain grammar to you. So you always get that grammar section whenever you complete the dialogues, going through the vocabulary and whatnot. Okay? And keep in mind, make sure you get the audio. You don't want to get a course, Chinese course, without audio. It's very, very important. Okay? So, these are for my analytical people. All right? And um, once you work through these courses, let's say if you did start with this course, it will take you to at least a low intermediate on your way to an intermediate level, I will say. And then this course here, I would recommend to continue on to the intermediate by Yong Ho. All right. So it's basically a continuation of this, this um, Beginner's Hippocrane series. He wrote this book as well. So if you start with any of these courses, once you finish them, I will advise you to go through this course here. Okay, so um, let's see here. Now, before I move on, I want to mention something else about the um, go back to Aussie Mill and the um, this FLR course. Now, you, there's going to come a point in time as time goes by, you're going to start to feel comfortable with constructions, how to put stuff together, and I think by that time you'll start feel, you'll you'll um be ready to start getting into grammar. So once once that time comes, then you can perhaps work start working through um I mean a lot of the stuff you probably will already know if you if you're using this FLR course and going through Ossimil or using the link, a lot of the stuff the content here you will probably already know. 
but it will be more of a sweep. You can just go through this, go go straight to the grammar section, and just read up on it, you know, and learn about some things that you really didn't know about before when you started on the other courses. All right. Now, moving on from these intermediate resources here, um, once you're on that level, intermediate level, you're you're pretty much see because when you get to an inter intermediate level, you're basically speaking now. You're 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 limited, but you're speaking. You can have a you can have conversations with native speakers. You know a lot of characters. You're pretty good in the language. So basically, what you need to do is just start learning more grammar stuff. Um, getting into grammar and reading like more complicated texts. So I would recommend to get something like um, a modern a, a modern Mandarin Chinese grammar book. Okay, I will get something like this, a Shams book. Now, obviously, this is not Chinese, but they have one for Chinese. It's a very good grammar book. And I will get something like this. This is a pretty old book that was sent to me by I think Peter Brown. It's a practical Chinese reader. This is book two. I don't have the book one, but I will get something like that. All right. So if you can find any type, like just basically readers, um, getting into grammar with uh, with the example sentences, those would be really good for an intermediate level. Now, these books over here are basically for like a high intermediate level to advance, okay? And once you get to that level, even the intermediate, I think you can start using these courses or some of these courses here. Um, I'm going to start with this one, The Masterworks Chinese Companion. This book here is really, really good. I haven't used it thoroughly. This actually was a book used at OSU when I was taking Chinese over there. This book is very, very good. It's for high intermediate level level reading or speaking, as it says back here. For students, for students of Chinese who have already mastered the basics of oral communication, especially students with Chinese speaking family environments, the ability to express oneself effectively in written Chinese is of great importance. Masterworks Chinese Companion is founded upon the conviction that in uh, that in order to learn to write skillfully, a student must first learn to read skillfully, not only in terms of basic comprehension, but also with a deeper appreciation for the techniques found in good writing. Drawing upon 12 short works <clears throat> that are essential to liter literary culture throughout the Chinese-speaking world, this textbook takes an integrated approach to the complementary arts of reading and writing. Uh, through carefully developed discussion topics, exercises, and special sections on writing uh, related uh, writing related topics, the author invites students to be thoughtful and creative in responding to the readings and challenges and challenges them to use the readings as models to improve their own composition skills. This text is ideal for students of Chinese at a high intermediate level of reading or speaking. Its unique approach makes it appropriate for use either as primary textbook or in conjunction with more grammar-oriented books such as Taiwan Today and a new text for a modern China. Um, all lesson materials appear in both tra traditional and simplified characters. Yeah, I'm glad they mentioned that because i got to show you that book as well. I think it's on the shelf. Let me get that book for you guys. Uh, let's see here. Where is that book? Okay, hold on for a second. Oh, I'm so glad I read that because I almost forgot about this book. A few books here I have that I want to recommend. All right. They mentioned new texts for a modern China. For modern China, This is the book that they were talking about. And I've actually um, made a video on this book before a long, long time ago because someone was asking about the characters, like uh, books that have both traditional and simplified that's what this book has. Okay, as you can see, on this side you have Simplified. Wait, is that right? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me see. Yeah, Simplified on this side and then Traditional on this side. Same text, but they have both sets. Alright, 
And this book is highly recommended. Once again, like they said, this book is will be once you get to like an at least an intermediate, upper intermediate level, you get done with like these the teacher self or any of these books I just recommended or just just recommended for like that um the intermediate level or once you get to the like from beginners to intermediate level, then you want to use something like these. Because these are what these are what's going to take you to a higher level, okay? So a new text for modern China, Masterworks Chinese Companion, very good book. All right, for like again intermediate upper intermediate level learners. Now here's a beginning text in Chinese. Okay, this um, let me see how basic it's pretty. Yeah, it's it's up there. It's like with the ch practical Chinese reader, you could get something like this. Okay, again for intermediate learners. All right, so it's intermediate material. Now this material here, you see, um, basically advanced. All right, when you get to like an advanced level. Now this book here is pretty old. This is a book they used at um, OSU. Uh, this is like a it was a natural Chinese for advanced learners, and um, it's basically like a talk show, an old talk show they used to have in China. I'm not sure if they they still have it, but there these are all interviews from that talk show, and it comes with audio as well. Okay, so tell it like it is. That's one advanced course that you can look into. All right. Now these other courses you see, you I know you see some Japanese. These courses are basically um you're learning Japanese through Chinese. Like these ones here, you're learning Korean through Chinese. Everything is there's no English. Okay? So if you wanted to learn a language like Korean and you have a Chinese background, you I would recommend getting books like these. Learn the language through whatever language you learn, through, learn it through Chinese. You see? You have all the explanations in Chinese, no English. And you, I, I, like I said, this is for intermediate. Uh, uh, sorry, advanced learners. Once you get to an advanced level, you want to start using text from Chinese to learn other languages, novels. You know, reading novels in Chinese. That's all advanced stuff. Reading newspapers. Okay, that's what you're gonna do once you get to like an advanced level. That's what I would highly recommend. And of course, as far as the speaking, you just have to speak. You just have to, you know, just just speak with some natives every day. Also, once you get to a pretty good level, you can go ahead and um, start getting into, and this is only if you're interested, get into literary Chinese, classical Chinese. Okay? It's, it's very difficult, but if you're interested, it's it's interesting at the same time. So, yeah, those are all the resources that I recommend. So let's do a, a, a quick review before I wrap this video up. So for complete beginners, you don't know where to start. You don't know what, what courses you should start with. I would highly recommend check out my course, my FLR course. Okay. My FLR course, the incentives of using, the, the incentives of using my course are... I have an, a video, and I, I have a video laid out where I, I give you a schedule. I, sh I give you the schedule of the time and exactly what you need to do when working through this course. I show you techniques on how you need to use the material in the course, the content. Not only that, once you learn that um, technique, you can actually apply it to other courses. All right? So I have a pretty thorough course. Um... What else? Uh, let's see here. Okay. And then Asimil. All right. Asimil, once again, natural approach. Um, it comes with audio. It's all text. No grammar. All right. There's no grammar in this course. No grammar explanations or anything. They may give you some culture notes, but you will, find, you, you will not find any grammar explanations. That's just how the method works. Okay, again, check out Link, Steve Kaufman's site. It's another approach without using grammar. Basically what it is, 
It's just text. A lot of text. You read, listen, read, listen, read, listen. And over time, you just get used to the content. Everything grows on you. Then there will be time to learn grammar. All right? And once again, like I did before, I'll post a link to his website. So, my course, the FLR course, the FLR Chinese, Aussie Mill. All right? Link. For a not for a more um, natural approach. Now these here, Hippocrane beginner series, uh, teach yourself living language, and then you have this continuation of the li living language Hippocrane. These are also for beginners. Okay, they are also for beginners, but for those beginners who are more of um, who are more into grammar, you're you're an analytical learner. These will be good for you, okay? Now, like I said before, if there, if there's, a, if it's a language that you want to learn, and let's say um, you want to learn um, Tibetan, but Tibetan is not available in Asimil or my course, then you may have to find just a normal textbook for Tibetan with dialogues and just pay attention to the dialogues and translation. You know, pretty much take the same approach that you would take with the Oxymil. You know, just focus on the dialogues, translations, do that for a certain period of time until you feel comfortable, and then go go ahead and go through the grammar section. That's what you may have to do since there, since the, um, there is no course available for that. All right? So these are the intermediate books, or, again, you can do that as a beginner. Okay? So, beginner, once you start getting to the uh, intermediate, then you want to move on to getting into grammar because, like I said, by that time, you start to feel comfortable w w with what's going on. Okay? So, modern, uh, modern Mandarin Chinese grammar, I will get that. I will get a, a Shams grammar for Chinese, of course. I will look into getting some practical readers. Okay? That's that. And I already said something about that dictionary. Language site dictionary for beginners. Once you get to you get to this intermediate, upper intermediate level, then you may want to start getting you want to get a dictionary like this. I think you'll be good enough to use a dictionary like this. You have to be pretty familiar with the Chinese characters um to use a dictionary like this. Okay? So this is a Far East Chinese English Dictionary. All right. Then we have Masterworks Chinese Companion, and then a new text for Modern China. This is for upper intermediate and upper intermediate learners. Okay. That. And then once you get to a an, an advanced level, then you want to start doing advanced things, such as finding courses. Like, you know, if you want to learn Spanish or any language, find, find find the Chinese course for it. And this is why I said before you even start Chinese, find some native speakers. Get some friends so that you can ask them later on, you know, if they can help you get courses for learning a particular language through Chinese. All right? That's advanced. And then you have this Tell It Like It Is course. You can check that out. Like I said, it's pretty old, but it's very interesting. The content, all everything is advanced. All right. Also, you can get into classical Chinese if you're interested. All right. So that's pretty much it. That's the run through. If you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, happy language learning to you. And um, yeah, thanks for viewing.